Today we're looking at Civics 9 on personal finance. The standard says, apply principles of money management to the preparation of a personal budget that addresses housing, transportation, food, clothing, medical expenses, insurance, checking and savings accounts, loans, investments, credit, and comparison shopping. The problem of scarcity forces everyone to make choices about the use of their resources. Budgets are plans for using resources. Budgets are used by governments, businesses, organizations, and families to manage financial resources. The goal of money management is to get the maximum amount of benefit from available resources with the minimum trade-offs. Written financial goals in a budget may help reach those important financial goals. Write down what you want. You should write down your financial goals. What do you want to have? And when would you want to have it? How long are you giving yourself? It's not really a goal if it doesn't have a deadline. How much money would you like in the bank? Use a realistic number. Sure, we'd all like a trillion dollars. We're not going to get a trillion dollars. Based on your income, pick up a realistic amount of money that you might save up in a given period of time, say three months or a year. What would you want to contribute to help others? Consider giving as a financial goal. What charities would you like to support? How much would you like to give? Know your income. How much money do you have? And how much money is coming in from all sources? That would include a salary from a job, income from a business, income from investments. So for example, dividends paid for stocks that you own. So you have to consider how much is coming in, but also when is money coming in? Many businesses are seasonal in nature. They make a lot of money in one part of the year, and there may be some months of the year where things are pretty tight. They have to budget and save money from the good part of the year to survive the bad part of the year. For example, if you have a toy store, you're probably going to make a lot of your money in October, November, December with the holiday shopping season. If you have a lawn care business, late spring, summer, and fall with leaves will be when you make a lot of your money. Winter and early spring, probably not as much. Taxes are another expense. How much are you paying in taxes? Taxes will be one of your largest expenses in life. Failing to pay taxes may land you in prison, deliberately avoiding paying your taxes lying on your tax returns, not filing a tax return. Those are crimes, and people go to prison for that. The IRS has a 96% conviction rate in court. You are very unlikely to beat them if they take you to court. Better to pay your taxes. Taxes are 12% of the average household budget. Another important part of your budget is housing. Do you rent or own? There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Renting provides flexibility in moving and repair expenses are covered by the landlord. You may be able to get out of a lease or sign a short-term lease or after a while the lease becomes month to month. So if you need to pick up and move for a job, you just uh, give notice and go. You could have a lease that might expire at a certain point, but even most leases can be broken with a penalty payment. On the downside, rent is lost money. When you pay rent, the money is gone forever. You're not building up equity in a home. It's not an investment. Buying a home 
means making mortgage payments for most people, unless you have the money to buy cash or pay cash for your home, um, you're going to have to go to a bank and take out a mortgage. A mortgage is a large loan. It may be paid off over a certain period of time and at a different interest rate depending on your credit worthiness. There are many types of mortgages and I'm not going to go into all the types of mortgages you can take out. Most people go for a standard 30 year mortgage at a fixed interest rate that stays the same regardless of what interest rates do in the market. Homeowners must budget for maintenance and for repairs. If you own the home, no one's going to come in and fix it for free. You've got to either learn how to fix the problems with your house or for the things you can't fix, find someone to fix it for you and pay them. Owning a home can be very expensive. Housing is 16% of the average household's expenses. Transportation. Public transit costs money each time it's used except for bus or subway services. It may offer a time-based pass. If you live in a large city, you can probably get a metro transit pass for a week or for a month or for whatever period of time and pay just one price and ride the service based on that monthly fee. Owning an automobile has costs beyond the price of the vehicle. Gasoline, oil changes, and insurance all cost money. Buying the car is just really the beginning of the expenses. If you use a loan to buy it rather than pay cash, then you've got the principal and interest to pay off on the loan. Plus, you've got all the maintenance, all the upkeep, the fuel. It can be very expensive to own a car. Transportation is 14% of the average household's expense. Food is another major expense in most households. Food prices may rise and fall when weather affects crop yields. If California has a drought, that may cause certain crops that are grown there to become much more expensive or hard to find. Food is 10% of the average household's expenses. Clothing is another expense households have to manage. Shop for clothing, not for labels. Clothing and clothes cleaning are 3% of the average household's expense. Medical expenses may be unpredictable. A sudden illness or injury may lead to catastrophic expenses. Health insurance may help with medical expenses, although one must be sure to have the right insurance. For example, some people with health insurance do not realize that without a cancer rider, they may not be ready for the expenses of chemotherapy. Your regular health insurance may or may not cover chemo or radiation therapy. You have to look at the coverage you have and make sure it covers the things that you're concerned that might happen to you. On average, health care is 6% of the average household budget. Insurance policies are arrangements in which a policyholder pays an insurance company to assume part or all of the risk of an activity, such as driving a car or owning a home. So you pay the insurance company your premium every month. If something happens, for example, you're, you get in a car wreck, and if your policy covers the damage from the car wreck, some policies are liability only. They only pay the other person if you're in a wreck. Some include comprehensive coverage. They pay you if you're in a wreck. But you have to understand which type of coverage you have to understand what they will pay for. Everyone pays in each month, and then the unlucky few who have accidents take money back out from that pool of money from the insurance company. And of course, the insurance company is making a profit by charging everyone for assuming that risk for them. Another example, a homeowner's policy pays in case a home is destroyed by fire. However, unless there's a flood policy, the same home destroyed by flood would not be covered by the homeowner's policy. 
after Katrina, many of the survivors had a rude awakening. They filed with their insurance companies to replace their homes that were destroyed by flood. But if they didn't have a flood insurance policy, the insurance companies didn't owe them anything. Their homes weren't destroyed by fire, they were destroyed by rising water. That's an entirely different policy. So many people lost their homes and the government may have paid them some money to help them out. The government didn't have to. But their insurance company didn't owe them anything because they didn't have coverage for flooding. They had coverage for other things. Checking accounts. Checking accounts are bank accounts which allow the account holder to easily access funds by writing a check or by using a debit card. What's the difference between a debit and a credit card? With a debit card, you're pulling your money out of your account. With a credit card, you're borrowing money from a bank or other institution and you have to pay that back with interest. So there's no interest to be paid on a debit card, however, you can only use the funds that are in your account. Checking accounts may include fees, but some banks waive fees for account holders who directly deposit their paychecks. If you're paying a fee on your checking account, you're probably not doing the comparison shopping that you should. Most people can find a bank that will offer them a no fee checking account. You have to look around. A savings account is a bank account that pays a small amount of interest for funds kept in the account. Lately, it's been a very small amount. Interest rates right now are so low that the amount paid in interest is hardly worth consideration. You might get a few cents, a couple of dollars back on a savings account in a quarter at this point. It's really not a good investment. It's a place to put your money to keep it maybe separate from your checking account to have a rainy day fund. It's not really an investment. It's not going to make enough money for you to be concerned about the amount you're getting back. A loan is a financial arrangement in which the lender provides money to a recipient. The money lent is the principal. The lender risk losing the money but stands to make more money by charging interest that is additional money that must be repaid along with the principal. So when you take out a loan you owe all the money that you took obviously but you also owe interest. That's additional money that the lender is charging you basically as rent for you borrowing their money. You're using their money they expect to be paid for the use of their money. The recipient must pay back the loan at a given interest rate over a set period of time. Investments. Individuals may invest money to earn more money. The money invested is at risk. The investment may make or lose money. Savings accounts and checking accounts are guaranteed by the government up to a quarter million dollars. If the bank closes, you'll get at least $250,000 back if that's how much you had in the bank. An investment has no insurance. If the investment goes bad, you lose your money. However, simply leaving money in the bank fails to earn enough money to overcome the loss of the value of money through inflation. Every year, because of an economic phenomenon known as inflation, your money loses value. If you just took your money in cash and stuck it under your mattress, which is not really recommended, when you pull the money back out, it's worth less than when you put it in because of inflation. So you have to find an investment that has a rate of return higher than the rate of inflation. Inflation is a loss of value of money over time. Credit rating refers to a score 
that reflects the credit worthiness of a potential loan recipient. That is, are you someone who pays back loans on time? If you are, you're credit worthy. To the extent that you're not, you are less credit worthy. A high credit score gained by repaying loans as promised means lower interest rates and greater availability of credit. If you have a reputation for paying back the money you borrow on time, lenders like banks will be happy to loan you money. They will charge you less interest and they're more willing to make that loan. If you pay loans back late or you fail to pay them off, your credit rating suffers. Banks may not be willing to loan you anything and if they are, well, they're gonna expect a lot of interest back because you're more of a risk Therefore, they'll want more of a reward for taking the risk of lending you money. A low credit score means loans may not be available. And employers may refuse to hire those with a low credit score as this is a measure of trustworthiness. So employers check credit ratings. There is nothing illegal about that. And if you have a bad credit rating, they may say, well, this person might steal from us to repay their loans or they're just generally not trustworthy. We want trustworthy employees. So a low credit score can affect a lot more than just loans. It can affect which jobs you can get. Comparison shopping. Making the most of one's money means spending as little as possible for the things one wants and needs. Comparison shopping requires research to find the best price for the product or service desired. It's more than just comparing prices. You have to compare the quality of the goods, the features of the product, to decide what best meets your needs at the price point you can afford. Some apps are very useful for comparison shopping. The user scans a barcode and prices for the same item online are provided. These apps are often free or inexpensive and they can save you a lot of money when you're shopping. In conclusion, money management is an important life skill. We'll make personal budgets in class to learn about financial management. And this is a resource that I use to find the percentage of various expenses for households.